And uh, today I'll be talking about our uh, power harvester uh, for the uh, sensor that we are building for uh, structural health monitoring in remote areas. And the research is performed uh, within uh, Texas A&M and uh, UT University of Texas at San Antonio uh, between uh, civil and environmental engineering department and electrical and community engineering department, uh, these two institutions. So the introduction, the thermoelectricity energy harvesting is an emerging technology where Actually, we are directly generating power from thermal gradients or temperature difference using thermoelectric generators that uh, provide electricity to a sensor or a system that will be collecting information about a civil infrastructure. So, especially in Texas, you can easily get 20 degree uh, temperature difference or uh, thermal gradient that can be powering up the thermoelectric generator and then can be used for uh, generating electricity. So the major uh, source of uh, delta T or the temperature difference will be coming from the surface of the road and the soil. Where the soil temperature is more or less uh, constant, but the uh, surface temperature changes from day to night, the uh, temperature difference will be more or less 20 degrees, and that will create enough power for powering the uh, sensor. In this study, we are going to basically develop a prototype to harvest uh, power uh, using the thermal energy and convert it to electrical power and condition and even power our sensors from that uh, to become uh, to make the uh, wireless uh, sensor units that will be monitoring the structure. The objective is optimizing the gradient, optimizing the power harvester, and also building the circuitry that will be able to operate with the harvested power and then be able to communicate uh, with the uh, receiver. Our methodology starts with the prototype uh, that will be basically transferring the heat from the surface to the soil where the uh, thermoelectric generator is actually buried so that uh, we can create a delta T or temperature difference and then harvest the energy basically uh, and deliver it to the rest of the circuitry. The uh, prototype consists of an isolated copper plate, could be either Z or L shaped, a thin thermoelectric generator. It's basically a small device that's sandwiched between the plate and the sink and a heat sink, which is basically at the bottom plate, so that we will have a delta T, while the soil temperature is basically one of the plates, the surface temperature transferred to the other plate of TEG to create the delta T, and hence the power that we are going to use and condition after that. These two figures show the uh, isolated copper plates, Z and uh, L shape. Uh, so that these are the ones transferring the power into the thermoelectric generator. This is the overall system, uh, the prototype, what it looks like. The, from the road surface, we have the copper plate conveying the heat to one plate of the thermoelectric generator, whereas the other one uh, is basically uh, getting the cooler side from the heat sink filled with water within soil already having a almost uh, constant temperature so that we will always create the heat gradient to harvest the power. The final element analysis uh, studied and, uh, to optimize the materials dimensions of the prototype uh, to get the maximum possible gradient to reach maximum power. So we need to know effective materials to determine the depth of the TEG dimensions and the number of units need to be simulated to optimize the power uh, creation where these models are basically simulated and then the depth is optimized to be around uh, 18 centimeters uh, that will give you the best gradient and hence the best power for the thermoelectric generator. 
Now, uh, our lab setup, this is basically done in UTSA, in San Antonio. Uh, they uh, provided the uh, top, you know, uh, that's basically emulating the surface of the rod, and then there's a heat sink at the bottom where it creates the heat difference, and then trying to uh, measure the power and also operate an LED as a result of the obtained uh, power. So the graph here shows as a function of time the milliwatt power created. Uh, on the average, uh, 10 to 20 maybe milliwatts, different uh, prototypes create different amounts of power, but uh, we basically create sufficient power to power the sensor. This is another set of measurements we conducted at Texas a and where we actually tried to decrease the delta T because we cannot rely on 10 degrees or 20 degrees of temperature difference. It can go down to actually zero because in the, during the day, temperature will be high, but at night it will be low. So the delta T will actually cross the zero in between when we are going from day to night since the soil temperature remains more or less constant, uh, at some point we are going to reach uh, zero and we are going to cross zero. So we have been trying to understand how much power we can create even with low temperature gradient. The graph here goes up to almost 0.5 degrees Celsius, where we can still get 50 millivolts of voltage from the thermoelectric generator which is sufficient using a voltage DC-DC converter to boost up to 8 to 10 volts and then power up our microcontroller and the remaining sensor unit. And the red curve here actually shows the expected open loop voltage, which is given by the formula of the manufacturer, whereas the blue curve almost on top of it is actual measurement. So the equation that is provided by the manufacturer, we verified, and basically the values we measure open uh, circuit voltage are conforming with the equation, and the uh, device basically works as expected. So that brings us to the development of the remaining of the sensor, where we start with the thermoelectric generator and uh, deliver that power voltage obtained to a DC-DC converter which is also a voltage booster. Since the output of the thermoelectric generator will be in the tens of millivolts of range, which is not useful, although there may be enough power, but the voltage levels will not be sufficient to uh, operate any circuit that we are planning to have in the sensor. So that's why we need to condition that voltage using a DC-DC converter, basically boosted up to maybe tens of volts, but then, that will be too high since that is a varying voltage depending on the temperature difference, directly proportional to temperature difference. Uh, we need to have a voltage regulator, which is the following block right here, uh, that will be regulating it to a level where the microcontroller that can work, which is basically a low power microcontroller that will be processing the data that we measure. In this example, or this sensor will be measuring the speed of the vehicle, measuring the axle, number of axles in a vehicle, uh, measuring the weight of the vehicle. So all these will be measured as the vehicles are passing over the highway, and we are going to store all these. The microcontroller will be sampling them, putting them into storage, which is internal memory, can be expanded to a much larger flash memory, and then we'll be storing them on the road as we keep measuring the data uh, day to day or basically in a uh, long amount of time. And the supercapacitor that we added there is only needed when we are trying to transmit this into a passing vehicle wirelessly. Wireless transmission will require larger amount of power, but only a very short amount of time. That's why we have the supercapacitor that will be providing that kind of current that microcontroller actual wireless transmitter needs, which will be basically initiating the transmission wirelessly. Whichever data that we store in the microcontroller on, on the memory, which is uh, in the pavement, will be transmitted to a passing vehicle. Upon the closure, well, when it gets closed, the wireless communication will initiate 
and then whatever data is stored on the microcontroller will be transmitted to a passing vehicle and the receiver will retrieve all the data and then reset the microcontroller and it will keep storing or measuring more vehicles uh, uh, until next time a vehicle passes and retrieves all the data. So this entire system is basically already built. We had a few preliminary measurements. Right now we are trying to optimize the overall design and coming up with uh, the measures of uh, what kind of data we need, how much memory we are going to require, not the initial one that is basically coming with the microcontroller, but we may need more memory to store. And also we are trying to understand how often this needs to be retrieved and come up with some limitations and come up with some guidelines to be able to use the sensor uh, on a typical road and then we can start the field testing. But these show basically the, uh, the, the DC-DC converter we are using, the regulator, this is wireless uh, the microcontroller and the wireless transmitter as well as the receiver which actually is attached directly to a USB port. So a person driving with a laptop and the receiver can easily retrieve the data and we already show the principle, uh, the concept that actually works. We are able to retrieve data wirelessly uh, using the uh, overall scheme here and we can easily power the microcontroller, which is a low power microcontroller. And now we are trying to optimize the supercapacitor for that. Uh, we are trying to extend the range for wireless transmission as well as we are trying to uh, optimize the time needed for retrieving all the data. So that also requires some data uh, processing in the microcontroller because we need to get the minimum amount of bits to completely transmit the information that is needed, which is the weight of the vehicle, speed, and the number of axles. So that since we are going to keep collecting this data, the uh, roles will be basically just providing that, like a database will be, uh, the information will be transmitted to a database. So the uh, transportation institute may have a better idea of the traffic, the amount of weight, and how long it's used. Basically, valuable statistics can be obtained about that road, and deploying these sensors on every road will give them a good idea about the maybe maintenance needs or uh, how thick the asphalt or the concrete should be on that road and the needs of that road will be much clearer. So, uh, and this will be basically powering itself, providing the information routinely and does not need any maintenance. So that's our goal finally, deploying this on all roads, making the roads smart structure rather than just being part of concrete or uh, asphalt. Some uh, lab setup that we have been uh, doing, simply just combining all these systems together. They are not really in a single PCB or uh, prototype yet, but that's our next goal to bring all these pieces together, combine all of them. Uh, further, could be a more customized ASIC or a, even an integrated circuit can be built so that the further minimization of that uh, structure can be done. So a sensor could be a very uh, small unit that could be easily deployed with any new rod embedded inside the concrete and then it will be just self-sustaining and self-powered sensor basically making the road smart. And integrating all the components and building a single unit that is uh, enclosed, uh, already uh, packaged will be also increasing the lifetime instead of building that using multiples of components and also decrease the cost down so that we can basically deploy this almost uh, anywhere on any road. As a conclusion, the prototype that we uh, built is capable of uh, generating an average of 10 milliwatts that's continuously over a period of eight hours a day. That's basically can be used in multiples of purposes. One of them is self-powered road signs. There are no power, let's say. There is no electricity, no wires, no cables. And we can basically still power up LEDs on a street sign or somewhere uh, a marking or a street that can be easily done. And that power will be sufficient to make an LED sign uh, visible. 
Our bigger goal is continuous power, obtaining continuous power from these TEGs. Now, I mentioned that the TEGs go through at delta T equal to zero. From day to night, we cannot avoid it. Independent of how hot, how cold it is, there will be a zero crossing. Which can be easily solved by having only two of them. At different depths, you will be basically having zero crossing, but not at the same time. All we need is 0.5 degree difference. So that can give us guaranteed continuous power that we can power up the microcontroller. It will not be, it may not be sufficient to power up at that time, maybe the uh, wireless transmitter, but that will be uh, only needed whenever the vehicle approaches, and by that time it will be already charged up. So that should not be providing much of a limitation. So that uh, having two of these will be uh, continuously operating the sensor, continuously operating the microcontroller, that will be basically continuously collecting data. And the stored data will be retrieved wirelessly uh, by a passing vehicle, unless there is a better alternative or better uh, maybe method that we have, or if there is any network around or power around that we can transmit the data directly to a network connected computer or maybe a wireless unit, that could be an alternative, but for now, uh, we are assuming the road is removed, there is no power available, no network available. In that sense, just a passing vehicle will be sufficient to uh, retrieve all the data wirelessly. So, just one more thing to note is that these devices are not obtrusive and uh, they, can, they do not interfere with the traffic, they are simply part of the road and need no maintenance, will be simply just uh, acting as a sensor. So once we are done with this project, we'll be having a, a prototype unit and soon we'll start field testing. We'll be using this on the road and uh, vehicle and we'll try to uh, not only measure, sense all the data that we need, we'll also try to retrieve and basically show the entire potential that this will be uh, working on almost any road. That's all I have for today. Thanks for listening. And I will answer any questions if you have any.